Hello, welcome to this very special interview of the litmus test with cinematographer extraordinaire Don McAlpine. G'day, Don. Too. Thank you for letting, inviting us into your home to talk with you. Now, there's quite a few things I want to get through with you, but I'm going to start with, let's start at the very beginning of your career. Um, you started out with the ABC and doing newsreel footage and that kind of thing, is that right? Uh, initially, I was a school teacher and uh, in physical education, and I got a uh, interest in um, photography as a kid, and then became interested in um, film when uh, I could use it as a teaching aid, and um, so I learned how to use a camera, and um, then uh, on a school trip, visited the ABC, walked into this new supervisor's office, and. Uh, that was it. Uh, he, the they, they offered me a, a contract to uh, shoot any news item they thought newsworthy, mm. and uh, they paid me money. Uh, headmaster said, you can't do that, Don, after about two years. And, um, the well, so you were doing this part-time while you were still teaching? Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> and, uh, and then um, the uh, outcome was that the ABC actually offered me a job as assistant cameraman, television news. Right, and you did quite a few really interesting news stories back then. You, um, you shot the Beatles when they arrived in the country. You went to Vietnam as a yep. war correspondent. Yeah, well, we, 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 and that was, it was a fantastic time. I mean, we were everywhere. Um, uh, I remember doing Four Corners story around the world and, uh, and was deemed your uh, sleep was on a jet plane. <laughs> 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 that, that, was your, that was your break. Uh, and you'd get back home in time to deliver the story uh, ready for... So that was your work. training ground, really, yeah? Oh, yeah. I really, really, my film school was, was that. Your it was the, probably the best, best film school anyone could have in the world. Um, you, were, um, you were given virtually incredible freedom as, as long as you delivered the goods. Uh, and um, it was an amazing group of guys, most of them to be honest, were hopeless. <laughs> uh, but um, a few of them were certainly uh, people I listened to a lot and learned a lot from. Well, a lot of people from that generation came up through Film Australia, ABC, doing that kind of stuff exactly. It was the only show in town. <laughs> uh, I mean, there was Newsreel, uh, which was even at that time starting to diminish. Um, and that was taken by, you know, that was probably a family business in some ways. So how did this, I'm gonna jump ahead. Because we've got a lot of movies to get through. Well, we have, haven't we? We have. How did this lead to a relationship with Bruce Beresford and making your first film, The Adventures of Barry McKenzie? Uh, got to jump it. Uh, ABC, and then I went to Film Australia, and very quickly uh, they um, made me chief cameraman at Film Australia. Uh, a producer from Bruce came to um, look for a cameraman for his first film, The Adventures of Barry McKenzie. I recommended three of our guys, and um, Bruce came back, or his deputy came back and said uh, he's seen a little documentary that I'd shot, and uh, would I be interested? So you didn't put your hand up initially? I didn't, no. no I, I, um, I don't know why. Was, I think looking back, it was rather stupid. But, <laughs> but um, right throughout my career, everything has happened. Um, doors have opened. I haven't had to push too hard. Oh, well, talent and luck, I guess, yes? Luck more than talent. So, I actually saw Barry McKenzie again recently. It's such, it holds up very well. And it was one of those early films that was the, you know, the renaissance of Australian cinema. It, well, it, it was it debatably the, the f one of the first of that, that yes. group. Um, whether it was first on the market or not, they were trying to think what the other one was. But anyway. Uh, well, those it, couple of years, this is 1972. And around that time, we also had Alvin Purple That's the one, yeah. you know, coming along. Yeah. Those two films yeah. in particular said, so, oh, yes, we can make our own, tell our own stories, yeah. um, which was a big thing. somebody made some money out of it, too. Yeah, because they made a sequel. Yeah. Must have worked OK. <laughs> um, jumping through things, so, and you've made, let me just talk about Bruce Barris for the moment. You've done a lot of films with Bruce over the years. Yeah, Bruce and I worked together, I think, on 10 films. Hmm. Um, uh, and it got, virtually got to the stage where uh, we understood each other so well that it 
to a level almost became uh, uh, boring is the wrong word, but I can't think of a more polite one. Uh, you know, we, 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 we didn't really talk to each other because we'd... It was just we'd, habit? We'd, 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 we'd just, mm -hmm. We just lived each other's uh, work and it was, it was great. And um, we're still friends to this day. So how has that relationship sort of grown and developed? Um, you, and you've had this relationship with a few directors. Bruce is the main one. Yeah. Um, and this is the, the core of a director cinematographer's relationship. Yeah. Uh, how has that developed with him, for example, since that first film, those first couple of films you did with him, The Barry McKenzie's? Um, How did you get that bond happening? Oh, well, of course, we, we, I was involved with the pre-production, pre-thinking, planning, not with the script writing, but being involved with this, while the script was being written um, with all those films. You know, in other words, they, they weren't just something, uh, come and shoot my movie next month, like... A lot of planning most, goes lot, into lot, it. Like most of the stuff I've done recently has been. Uh, no, this this was all part of a organic uh, relationship. Um, that, I suppose know. what I'm getting at is Barry McKenzie was one of those slapdash films. It was it was kind of rough and ready and um, kind of handmade, and it looks it's got this earthy quality to it still to this day. You know, uh, it's not slick necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, which many of Bruce's films in later years and yours have become. Yeah, yeah. So uh, was that on purpose or was that just the nature of getting out there and doing it in those days? Well, we've got to realise that this is the first time I'd been on a motion picture mm. set. Uh, uh, I'd done dramatised documentaries at Film Australia. You know, how to, how to interview for a job and somebody dramatising a wonderful sequence on foot and mouth disease or something like <laughs> that. But it was still, it was sort of still a quasi-drama. But to actually walk onto a movie set was quite amazing. How'd that uh, feel? Um, all through my career, the greatest, um, greatest creative stimulus has been panic. <laughs> and there was a lot of it there. <laughs> but... Um, you know, I've, I've always adopted the attitude, I believe, that, you know, I do my best and if it's not good enough, I'll get somebody else.